welcome to my channel. My name is Alex Beckelling. Nice to have you back. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Spitfire Audio Firewood Piano. It's part of their original series. They're all £29, $29, €29, Euros, whatever. Um, and uh, the Firewood Piano is a sample um, library rendering of a piano that belongs to Jeremiah Freight, who is the uh, keyboard player for the Lumineers. And um, the reason it's called the Firewood Piano is because um, basically his piano tuner um, considers it only worth firewood. He nicknames it Firewood uh, because it's basically knackered and there's I think there's some sort of damage to it. And But um, Jeremiah really loves the sound of it. It's it's um, I believe it's sort of mid 50s sort of era piano and it's just got a really nice, unique sort of feel to it. So the Spitfire Piano comes with the original series GY. Um, which is pretty similar with most of them. Um, this is Spitfire's own sort of bespoke um, plug-in, if you like. Um, and you get three mic positions as, as looking at it as out of the box. Um, you've got things like reverb and tightness, hammers and pedal, which I'll explain in a moment. And uh, then you've got various options when you drop your menu down here of different versions of the piano which includes a, a sampled felt version as well which is really nice and I'll show you that in a minute so um, firstly let's hear the the fiber piano as, as it comes out of the box so you've got a little bit of the um, the close mic um, sample um, which is as you can see on the GUI condenser microphones placed over each shoulder of the player for an intimate and defined sound so if you like the microphones are sort of about here looking into the piano so if, imagine the piano is in front of me um, and then we've got the, the mid, which is a stereo pair blended with a vintage mono signal for a slightly more distant characterful sound. Um, and then over here we've got the pad, which is, as I say, piano samples recorded with the middle pedal pressed, uh, allowing that resonating strings to create a natural reverberant pad. So if you imagine when you play a piano and you hold that um, that middle pedal down and it just let you just let it reverb off into the distance and you get that lovely sort of sound of all the different strings resonating and around the around the box of the piano and the, the body of the piano should I say and the room and things like that it's lovely um, so they've created a pad out of that so out of the box what you get is this really nice over here you've got uh, reverb so um, that is an artificial reverb that you're that they're adding but um, so you can add more or less of it so just put it right to the top to give you the full full effect <laughs> so it's quite subtle um, but I think it really gives it quite a nice effect but without the reverb you can hear it is definitely deader so I like to have the reverb about halfway normally, unless I want it for effect and just give it a bit more, a bit more room, you know, so a bit more ambient, if you like. The tightness is all about um, allowing the sample just cut into the sample a little bit. So um, sometimes um, this is one one reason you can use it. Sometimes your computer system or whatever your your door might be struggling a little bit to um, play the samples sort of as quickly as possible. Um, because of your buffer settings or whatever. Um, tightness um, cuts into the sample a little bit and just enables you to play it in, t in time a little bit better. So it eliminates that first part of the sample, which, you know, with a, pia with a piano, it's natural for um, when you play the key, play the key, there's a sort of, there's a certain time between you actually hitting the key and the key falling and making the sound because piano is a mechanical instrument so um, what you can do is you can just put the tightness up really just to help you with your timing a little bit um, just to sort of eliminate that effect slightly and then pull it back down again so you get more natural sound from the piano so that's what tightness is all about hammers is all about um, the sampling of the hammers of the piano so these are set on what's known as a re release trigger so um, when you play the piano and then release it. Hear that sample of the hammers falling back? 
So that's what that's all about. And then again, you can adjust them to taste. Um, the pedal is very similar to the hammers in that it's a sample of um, uh, the pedals being used on a piano. I don't actually have any pedals that address this particular um, sample um, in, in MIDI. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate you that, um, but you'll have to take my word for it. But again, you can mix it to taste. So um, let's have a look at the mics. The first microphone is the close mic. So this is, as I say, a pair, uh, a condenser mic placed over each shoulder of the player for an intimate and defined sound. So a nice close sound, even without the reverb, let's just do that. Lovely job. Um, so that's a really nice sound, very kind of intimate, as I said, sound and um, yeah, it just gets a real kind of close recording of the piano, which is nice. So this mid, as they say, is um, a stereo pair blended with a vintage mono signal. So slightly more distant from the from the piano. Um, I'm assuming this might be recorded possibly from behind the piano, possibly, or even just sort of further back from where, where the player was sitting than the close mics. So... Um, nice you can hear the room a little bit better with that can't you it's um it's really nice and just the combining the two of those you know you can just get gives you a bit, bit more of a convincing piano sound in the room lovely stuff and again of course you can add the reverb and things like that for, for taste if you want to sort of give it a bit more ambience uh, i actually like it like that to be honest and um, i do use it with the reverb but i do like that natural sound with a bit of a blend of both those microphones now the pads as I said, recorded from that sound that if you hold the middle pedal down, um, you get that sort of reverbing all the strings going off. So what they've done is recorded that deliberately. Let's listen to that on its own because I think it's really nice. So we'll just turn that up and let the samples load. So. I think that's lovely how that just keeps going and sort of resonates and loops around and you just get this really nice ambience and it's really nice to have there in the background again if you have the two other mics up a bit let's put the pad up to the top for emphasis but you can hear them hear it playing lovely sound um very very clever idea i think so now let's have a look at the the menu here um just to mention also that these four functions that are here if you click the middle button there you can um get those functions up as well and adjust them with the the big wheel here like this Ta -da. okay so you see the reverbs going there um, the other thing is that all these are assignable to your midi controllers so um, if I was to click and learn MIDI automa automa automation, um, so if I was to click and learn MIDI automation, you would see there that it would immediately start controlling that there. So I'm using my MIDI control sliders here on my Novation launch key and then the next one there I can put onto the next thing there we go the next slider so I've got them both there it was controlled yeah uh, etc so let's do that again he says right ah, because I've inadvertently Put it on the wrong one. There you go. 
How's that? There we go. And you could do the decks for the pedal as well. Um, so keep the tightness down and keep the relock up a little bit. There we go. Um, and as a default, the modulation wheel um, will go onto this dynamics fader here. Dynamics fader um, increases the dynamic being played. So um, in this particular case, uh, I'm just going to turn that down. In this particular case, so at the top, it reduces the dynamic range pretty much completely. So it's just all big, nice, big, nice notes. Um, and then when you put it down to the bottom again, you can play softly with velocity, and velocity will take over the dynamic range. Hit it hard, hit it softly. This dynamic range can give you a sort of range between those two. So, okay, so that's what that does. And then the expression in this case, which as yet I haven't got set to a MIDI controller specifically, um, but in this case it basically is volume. So that's that's how that would work. Um, and you can use that, use those in conjunction to sort of get a bit more dynamic on, on the piano. Um, other Spitfire libraries are quite often string libraries as well. That's really useful, this sort of expression of dynamics combination to really give the strings parts some life as well. Um, but of course, in this case, probably the best application of combining the two would be the pads, just to give them a little bit of life. So let me explain to that. So drop the menu down here. We've got the presets, if you like. Uh, we've got firewood, uh, which we're playing at the moment. And then uh, we've got firewood and pad, which is just a preset combination of the close mic and the pad. As you can hear. Uh, if you then go down, we've got the felt piano. So this is where they've actually given it a little bit of felt in between the strings. There we go. Uh, between the hammers and the strings for a soft, warm timbre. There we go. So let's just make sure that's running. And then, so is that really? Lovely soft felt sound. There we go. And then we've got the felt and the pads. Very cinematic sound. And um, following on from that, we've got the warps. So this is where they've basically used these pad sounds and these um, other samples, played around with them a little bit with processing reverbs and delays in this particular case, I believe. So they've got an analog delay and spring reverb they've used to do these. Um, and they're just varying versions of these. They're actually, some of them are, um, one of them is a longer um, uh, pad, if you like, or a longer, There you go. So it sort of dies out relatively quickly. It doesn't kind of keep going. Um, and then we've got pad two. Which is more or less the pad you get with the other patches. And sustains for ages and you can hold it on. Okay. Um, and then you've got pad three, which I believe is a very short one or shorter, just make sure this one's turned off. There we are, so that kind of doesn't sustain for particularly long. There we go. So different combinations of the delay and spring reverb um, and different sort of parameters they've used on them to get these different effects in and together. You've got this. pad sound which is nice so what I've done is I've created a little bit of music using all of the um, well a combination of the patches of the pads and the different piano sounds uh, it's called the walk I wrote it a few years ago to be honest but um, I've just done a little version of it for this 
I'm going to play you that now. Um, but if you would like to subscribe and give me a like, I would be very, very grateful. Um, and please share the video if you like as well. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, here's the bit of music. I will see you in the next one.